Today we're going to be talking about aspects of zeros and poles of f of z. So really what we have here, you know, we have these functions that are in our analytic, you know, except at uh, poles, these isolated singularities. And then of course on the on the opposite side, we, we know that if I, of course, if I, um, if I have functions, uh, the other analytic functions uh, except at poles, poles are typically described, and we've written this down before, f of z can be characterized as before by some function who, which is analytic, uh, where uh, this is analytic, and uh, non-zero, Uh, at a point z naught. Okay, so we're analytic except at poles. So if, if z naught is a pole of m order, then we can always write down, a, we can always express this function by factorizing with this, we can have this sort of factor sitting out front. Right, so we can always factor things in this way. Well, it turns out uh, zeros you know, work similarly. All right, so now let's, let's erase what we think of zero. Now, so we're going to reset uh, f of z. And now suppose that f of, at z zero is equal to zero, right? That means now z uh, is a root of f, okay? And also suppose that f of uh, f, sorry, f of z is analytic at z, okay, at z naught. So uh, with this with this statement, it turns out we can express we can do a, a there is a you know we can similarly uh, we can factor. Uh, f of z to be equal to some uh, z minus z naught to the m power times g of z, where g, oops, where, uh, where g of z is analytic and non-zero at z naught. Okay, so the idea is that again. Similarly, there's our, you know, our factorization. Factorization is always uh, possible, provided our function is analytic there. Okay, so the idea here is zeros work very similarly to poles, and we and we call it that an m order zero. Okay, so now let's uh, just give a quick understanding. We'll, we'll not prove this exactly, but just see if we can understand. So if f is analytic, then of course I can write it, we can write a Taylor series for it. That means there's some unique uh, set of complex numbers such that I can write f of z um, and I'm going to say that's at z naught. We're going to expand about z naught, where that's a n. n goes from zero to infinity of z minus z naught to the n power. And okay, we're going to now suppose that there is an m order pole, and that implies then that we can write as follows: we can write a zero plus a one times z one minus z naught to the first power. So a2, z1 minus, or sorry, z minus z naught at the, to the second power. And so on and so forth. Uh, the thing we can do then, of course, is, you know, um, it, because of this theorem is true, of course, we can write it as follows. We can say that there's actually that, um, it implies then that a one zero, 
A1, A2, all the way to A m minus 1, whatever m is, all are 0. So we can write it as follows. We can write our series then as the sum from n equals m to infinity of a m z minus z naught squared, sorry, oops, to the n power plus, uh, okay, there's, so, so that is the, so that's an n there, not an m. Um, so there's our, our Taylor series. Now, of course, we can factor out the nth order root, or like that. And then we're left with n is equal to m going to infinity of a n. And now we're going to have z minus z naught of n minus m. Okay. All right. Obviously, what this is going to do is, uh, you know, it's going to. Uh, so this now is the Taylor series representation for g of z, which of course is uh, non-zero at z naught, because uh, when n is equal to m, you know, it implies then that z minus z naught n minus m is equal to 1. And we knew that a m was not equal to zero, so g at z naught is simply equal to a m. Okay, so that's a again. I'm not. That's not a, a a detailed proof of this, but just an understanding of how this works. But again, the big idea here is that zeros of analytic functions. can be factored. All right, and that again is a really nice tool. It says that when we're, we're describing functions by these sort of uh, uh, um, terms, that they are really essential to the description of analytic functions and their zeros. Again, so these are, of course, we're really studying a lot of interesting properties about functions of uh, analytic functions. So now let's, let's go on to now talk about other aspects of zeros. Okay, so other aspects of zeros, and this has to do with um, the big. The big question there is now um, um, is that uh, you know if f is analytic, right? And f at so it's analytic at z naught. We're always thinking of this point z naught as our point of study, and that that z naught is a zero, right? So that's what we call a zero uh, for f. Put that in quotes. Okay. The the answer is okay. How do we describe? Uh, you know. So the question then is, you know, how you know, what can we say? I should say that. What can we say about F near uh, near Z naught? Okay, so for instance, uh, if that's our question, and you know, the, the, the sort of alternatives are as follows. Uh, one, uh, we could have that um, f is a zero elsewhere. Um, and, and, and what I mean by that is that uh, the, the zero is not isolated. All right, so if I write f of z is equal to zero, and I know that f of z naught is equal to zero. And if I were to, you know, look at a neighborhood around z naught, I could find other points, you know, sort of a, you know, basically a level curve where f of z is equal to zero uh, on some 
line, or uh, you know maybe some domain, some open air, uh, set. So is this true? I, again, I don't know if this is true, but the idea is could could we find something like that? Or uh, alternative is no, is that f of z is can't be equal to zero in any uh, neighborhood. So it turns out number two is the is the correct answer. But let's be a little bit more precise about what we mean. Okay, so obviously, um, so we we have two we have two theorems that we're going to state, and they they go in opposite directions of implication. So let's write down, um, you know, again, so f is A, is analytic, uh, in, you know, a neighborhood of Z naught, and F of Z is equal to zero. Uh, so if we have this statement then, uh, and we'll also say that, uh, you know, uh, but, you know, uh, F is not identically equal to zero, in uh, any uh, in any domain uh, around z naught. Okay, so we're saying that basically the function itself can't be totally equal to zero. Okay, so it could be equal to zero at some points, but not equal to zero in, entirely in some domain of the point. So let's draw a picture to see what I mean there. So here, here's z naught. We know it's zero. Uh, what we're saying is that f throughout all of this whole area in this neighborhood can't be equal to zero throughout. Okay? It could possibly be zero on some, you know, uh, some level curve, but that's not being equal to zero everywhere in the neighborhood, right? So, so basically, that we'll, we'll not rule that out. But what we're going to say then the implication then then we say. Um, we have to say then that it turns out that this 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 option of having a of having a, maybe a line where f is zero is not possible. So basically, we if f is analytic in some neighborhood, but f is not identically zero, then z naught is an isolated uh, zero point. So what we're saying is this is not possible. Okay. Okay. All right. And then we have an alternative theorem, or sort of a, a theorem that goes in the other direction, which is that um, that that uh, uh, if f of z is equal to zero on some line segment. Uh, containing containing a z naught or uh, is equal to zero on some uh, domain where z naught is an element in that domain. If this is true, then f of z is identically zero. Okay, so we see really, let's go to this, we'll call that theorem one, we'll call this theorem two. Uh, theorem one is basically stating, uh, and I'll just uh, uh, abbreviate, that um, if f is not uh, equal to the zero function, then we have this implication. I should put it that way. Implication is z naught is isolated. And theorem two is essentially going the other way. It says that if z naught is not isolated, then f is identically the zero function in some domain. Okay. So, uh, so these two uh, implications now are, uh, um, you know, there are, you know, there. Uh, uh, what we can see there is that they're, they're, uh, uh, 
uh, a, a logical contrapositives of each other. So, uh, so that uh, can help us understand a little bit more about this. So the idea that the, the function can't have uh, level curves, and, and that is actually maybe a corollary of this. So a corollary of this idea then is if f is analytic, uh, and then I say that, and I say that, okay, well, now I'm going to say f of z. I'm going to find all points where f of z is equal to a, okay, where a is some complex number, right? So obviously then I'm going to define g of z minus a, or sorry, oops, g of z is going to be f of z minus a. And this is, of course, also analytic. And g of uh, um, so so let's say this is true, and I, and I say I find uh, z naught such that f of z naught is equal to a. So I have actually found a solution. Z naught is a solution. Well, okay. Now I want to find other points. Of course, z that are also equal to a. I want to see if I can form some sort of uh, a level curve, right? So uh, what we can say then is uh, the idea is that that of course is a root, so that gets us back to this. And so what we're going to say then is that um, that uh, z zero is isolated, unless this function itself, unless g is actually equal to a. Or sorry, if f is equal to a, then of course g would be equal to the zero function. But if that, if if, if barring that case, then z z naught is an isolated point. So that means if I have the equation f of z is equal to a, and I find you know in the plane, I find that z naught is a point where f is equal to a. I want to look nearby. I want to look nearby, see if I can find points nearby, like some sort of uh, you know level cur level surface or something. You know who knows what it looks like, where on this curve, f of z is equal to a for all uh, z on. I'm going to call that the curve on all z and t on c. Uh, well, the answer then is that f of z has to be equal to a, I mean it has to be defined as the function, the constant function. That's the only way. If, if barring that, it's not possible. So basically what we're saying is level sets of um, analytic functions uh, don't exist. Or, or rather, uh, if you think of a level set of a function, they're just isolated points. You know, there's only isolated points. Okay, and so that's a very interesting aspect of analytic functions. Um, you know, they're always changing, and there, and and no matter which direction you're headed, if you're at some point z naught, and you go in these any different direction, there's no way the function will stay the same. It's always changing in every direction you go. Um, and so that's uh, and so that's an interesting aspect of uh, of of analytic functions that will have uh, very useful properties as we go further. Okay, so thank you very much.